Hey there, Caleb Logic of DIY Video Guy here, and in this video we're going to review the Canon XC10, a little camcorder from Canon that shoots 4K and also does stills. We're gonna talk through the features and give you my opinion on what I think of it. As far as specs go, the XC10 has a one inch sensor in it and it's only 2.3 pounds, which means this thing is super lightweight if you're going to carry it around for a long time or travel with it or pack it up, it's nice and light. And the fact that the lens is built on is nice too because then you don't have to take a bunch of lenses with you as well. This thing shoots 4K up to 305 megabits per second, both in 24P or in 30P and it also shoots in 1080p up to 60 frames a second. The XC10 is a 422 color space and shoots in 8-bit, not 10-bit or 12-bit or any higher bit rate, but it does get a pretty decent image quality out of it. If you wanna shoot in slow motion, you can drop it down to 720p and get 120 frames per second and then slow that down later in post. The built-on lens is a 10X lens, so it'll go from 24 to 240 millimeters, which is a 35 millimeter equivalent. So if you have a full frame camera, that's the focal length that this matches up to. And this thing is actually really, really good. I used it out here to get some surfers, get some shots from all the way back on the beach. It looked like I had a massive lens on, but I really just had this tiny little lens here that's built on to the camera. It comes with a lens hood and also a loop viewfinder to look through the back of the LCD screen on the camera. And that thing isn't the greatest in my opinion. I've used some Zacuto Z finders that are a little bit better. It's kind of flimsy, it does snap on. So I'd use it if I was outside, but I might not even take it most of the time. The three inch LCD actually rotates on the back 90 degrees up and then about 45, 50 degrees down. Um, but it doesn't fully flip back towards you either on top or to the side. So you're not going to be doing vlogging or anything like that with this camera without just trusting the autofocus and framing from when you hold it out. On the sides of the camera, you have a mic jack, an HDMI port to actually run it into a monitor or to record separately. You have a USB port if you want to offload the camera's footage and you have an AC in for power. And then on the other side, you have a headphone jack by the handle, but it's kind of weird and placement wise. So if you are wearing headphones and using the camera, it can kind of get in your way. Like a regular camera, it has both photo and video mode that you can flip to. The photos are 12 megapixel, but they're simply JPEG, they're not raw. And you have different settings, so you can shoot in manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, portrait, or even auto. So what I ended up doing is sometimes if you just need someone to get a shot of you, throw the thing in auto, hand it to them, it has image stabilization, it has really good autofocus, so you can get some decent shots from someone that doesn't really know what they're doing. The screen on the back is a touch screen, so you can actually touch it to focus on a different point, and you're also going to be going through your menus that way as well, or you can use the joystick on the back. This camera will detect faces, so it'll actually track faces and it'll autofocus on them. It can switch between them as well if you want, but I found that most of the time, if I really wanted the camera to focus on something, I would just use the touch screen and have it do it then. The image stabilizer built into this lens and camera is really, really great. You can pretty much handhold this thing all the time and not really need a monopod or a tripod if you have that image stabilization turned on. Uh, even at 240 millimeters, it's a pretty steady image. This camera takes both CFast 2.0 cards and SD cards. If you want to shoot in 4K, you have to use CFast 2.0, and to shoot in 1080p, you have to use the SD cards. You also have a side grip that rotates, so it rotates 90 degrees forward, 90 degrees back, and it's nice when you're shooting a little lower or you're shooting up high, and it's very quick to use. The battery then is housed in there. They use LPE6N batteries, which is the new version of what they've used in DSLRs for a long time, and it has a little bit more capacity, but if you have a bunch of LPE6 batteries just laying around from other cameras, then you can use those with this as well. There are a couple nice built-in log profiles into the camera. So you have a picture profile for YDR as well as Canon log. So if you're filming on other Canon cinema cameras, you can shoot in the same picture profile on all of them and match them up later. It also has the ability to be controlled via Wi-Fi. So it'll create its own Wi-Fi network. You can connect to it via any browser, whether that's on your phone or on a computer and actually change the settings on the camera. So this would be really good if you were operating a gimbal or you were using a drone, or you just have a camera somewhere where you couldn't get to it, 
And with a lightweight camera like this, being able to control it via Wi-Fi in that browser is really nice. As far as using this thing goes, I did like the touchscreen for autofocus and the fact that it did face tracking autofocus as well. The focus changes in general were fairly smooth and fairly quick too. The onboard microphone isn't that bad and the fact that you have a headphone jack and a mic jack on the other side so you can put a shotgun mic or some other sort of mic into the cold shoe is a good option as well. The thing I actually like most about this camera is the thing that people complained about when it was first announced and when people were first reviewing it when it came out almost a year ago is actually the lens because this lens is not very big. It is image stabilized so all the shots you're getting are pretty solid and don't really need a monopod or a tripod to, to function with this camera. And the zoom range on this thing is pretty incredible. You're not going to find a lens like this that you can just put on your DSLR that's image stabilized with this kind of range and this kind of size. So the fact that people hated that you can't change the lens is an issue a bit. You know, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later, but I really do like the lens on this thing. And it also has built in ND, or you can screw on filters if you're shooting outside during the day. As for things I didn't really like about this camera, I didn't like the touchscreen when I was using the menus. It's cumbersome to navigate the menus and the way you change aperture, shutter speed, ISO with a little slider at the bottom of the screen, it's just not the best system to be changing these things. I wish there was another dial here on the back of the camera like there is up here. You can really only program this to one of those three main settings that you're going to be changing all the time. So I wish there was another dial on the back and I didn't have to use the touchscreen all the time, especially because if you throw that viewfinder loop on the back, you can't touch the screen. So you're stuck using this joystick and there are even some things you can't really change without being able to touch the screen quickly. Some things I didn't like about this lens are that as you zoom, the aperture will change. So it's not a constant f2.8 aperture. As you go into fully zoomed in, you're, you're losing light, the image is getting darker, the aperture is changing. So if you want to have consistent light throughout a zoom, you're gonna have to set it to something higher like 5.6. This camera also isn't that great in low light because it only goes down to 2.8 and that's if you're fully zoomed out. And as you zoom in, you have to use a narrower aperture. This isn't really that great in low light and the aperture doesn't go very high. So I wouldn't recommend this to someone shooting a lot of indoor things or weddings or events that are in dark spaces. Uh, you're gonna have to crank the ISO on this thing and the image then suffers a little bit. In ideal environments, the autofocus on this thing is pretty fast, but if you're trying to focus on something that's really dark, so on a camera that's this color or something like that, sometimes autofocus is pretty slow because it's contrast based. So it really depends on what you're focusing on as to how fast the camera will focus. While the photos in this thing are 12 megapixel, they are straight JPEGs. You're not getting raw photo capabilities. So if you're heavy into photos, you're gonna still want a DSLR or mirrorless camera to take care of that for you. And then if you wanna shoot 4K, like I said, you have to use a CFast 2.0 card and those things are pretty expensive. It comes with a 64 gigabyte CFast 2 card, but that's only gonna get you less than a half an hour of shooting in 4K in the highest bit rate on this thing. And then if you wanna shoot in 1080p, you're gonna to have to have an SD card in there as well. So you're not gonna be able to shoot 4K on an SD card, even though other cameras from companies like Sony are able to do that. You're just gonna be stuck shooting on CFast 2.0 cards, which are very expensive. So I think this camera is actually great for someone that has a Canon Cinema camera, uh, a C100, a C300, C500, and they need a B cam, a C cam, or even a D cam because you can shoot in YDR or Canon log. And with a 4K sensor, you're getting a pretty good image out of this thing. I think this camera is also for people that want to do gimbal work or drone work because you can control it via Wi-Fi. It's really lightweight. It has a lens that's image stabilized and has a wide range, so you can use it for a bunch of different things. So that would be another example of someone it would be good for. And third, I think it would be perfect as a travel video camera slash photo camera. So if I'm going on a trip or I'm doing a documentary shoot or something where I want to blend in a little bit, but still get good video and be able to do really close up shots from people far away, this is the camera I'm probably gonna take. I would say this camera is not for someone that wants to shoot stills mainly because you're only getting 12 megapixel, you're only getting JPEGs and not raw photos. 
So if photos are really important and you need a hybrid camera that does photos better, this is probably not the best option. It also probably isn't for someone that wants to do a video production business and build that business around this one camera because you're having the one mic input, you're not gonna be able to run XLRs into this thing. It's limited with the touch screen and the bit rate and all that kind of stuff. So you might wanna go with the higher end camera for something like that. But if you're getting your first video specific camera, I would rather have this thing than a DSLR. So I'd rather have this than an 80D or a 5D Mark III or something like that because it shoots 4K, it's good at doing video specifically, and it has the ability to be a little bit future-proofed with the 4K and being able to run microphones and headphones out of it as well. So I think this is a pretty solid camera for the price at around 2,000 or 2,500 US dollars. There are other options on the market, but I've actually really liked this thing and I was surprised by how much I did. Special thanks to B&H Photo Video for sending this to us to review and be sure to check out other camera reviews on our YouTube channel and subscribe for more. I've been Caleb Wojcik of DOI Video Guy. Thanks so much for watching.